Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a wine from southern France from a producer called Gérard Bertrand. And this is the Grand Vin from his Chateau L'Hospitalet. It's the 2019 vintage of that. And we're in the um, La Clap Appellation, which is um, to the east of Narbonne. Now, this is uh, an estate that Gérard bought in 2002. Um, and has spent quite a lot of time uh, regenerating and building up. He had, has had a very long and interesting career. Um, as a young man, he was a professional rugby player at one stage um, and very successful at, the, at that. He played for Narbonne, he played for Stade Francais, so top level French rugby. And um, it was quite tragic. In, at the age of 22 in 1987, his uh, father died in a car accident, and which left him in charge of his family's wine estate in Corbière, uh, Chateau Ville Majou. Um, and so at one stage he was both pursuing a career as a professional rugby player and running this wine estate. Now he was obviously very capable and very um, successful at that because now he has 13 estates throughout southern France and um, his children and grandchildren are all, many of them are involved in the business with him. The um, estate here is in quite a historic site. Um, the uh, soils are a, a chalk massif, it's a continuation of the Pyrenees, um, and um, it's somewhere where, the, at one stage it was an island evidently, and the, um, both the Phoenicians and the Romans came through here trading, and the site was, was suited to growing grapes and making wine, and thus um, got vines were brought, and so it's almost um, as if winemaking here goes back beyond record keeping. The um, the area is no longer an island. This um, earth has backfilled in behind it, but it still has this long history. I think in, in the 13th century, the uh, Hospice de Narbonne um, set up here as the estate, and that it was a, a place where pilgrims, possibly heading to Compostela, um, would have stopped off, and it was a place of hospitality. Now, um, Gerard very much become a leader of the regeneration of the Languedoc region, which, you know, since he um, took over his Corbiera estate in, in um, 1987, has actually changed immensely from producing large amounts of very cheap wine to actually the, the, there being a quality res revolution, which Hospitalet has been at the forefront of. The site here benefits from being one of the sunniest in France, um, and you have a situation where the chalk soils here, along with some mull, but the chalk is a fractured white soil. So the, the sun is intense and it's reflected back at the grapes. So it's a, it's a, a great place to ripen grapes. Yields are kept very low because the rainfall is quite low. And, and thankfully the chalky and the mull soils are quite good at retaining what water there is. The climate is moderated somewhat by the influence of the nearby Mediterranean. You can see the sea from the estate. Um, and they're about 100 metres above sea level, which also has a slightly cooling influence. So, you know, a fantastic sight there. Um, Bertrand, as part of the sort of thought leadership that he's had in this area, um, has um, put in place biodynamic viticultural practices. Uh, so in 2013 they started this and they're, they're certified by Demeter, so all their production is, is biodynamic. Um, the blend here is a blend of Syrah, I think about 68% Syrah, with 24% um, of Grenache, just to soften it and round it out, and then a, a further 8% of Mourvedre, giving it some real guts, I should think. The different varieties are fermented separately and kept separate until the February of the following year. Um, when they're blended, they go into oak for a, a year to age into French oak. So um, let's have a look at the wine, shall we, and see what we think. We've got beautifully dense wine, um, dark, ruby red, staining the glass a bit as I swirl it. Can't really see through it, it's virtually opaque. And yes, throwing some, some quite obvious tears on the side of the glass, which is hardly surprising because when I look at the alcohol on the label, it says 15 and a half. So I'm expecting this to be quite an intense wine. 
So let's see what the aromas are like, shall we? There is a real richness, almost, it's almost sort of a chocolatey top note, the aromas in terms of the, the, the richness and intensity. But in there, there's a, a lovely deep red fruit. It's like um, plum skin, almost veering towards a slightly pruny over maturity. But there is still a sort of a freshness of a red fruit. It, it's not, um, it's not really showing heavy sur maturité sort of notes. Tasting that, it's rich and it's warm. It's quite full bodied, but there's quite a structure. And the structure, the tannins, and the combination of those, those oaky tannins, the um, cedary notes, and the warming alcohol in there makes it very spicy, almost peppery at first. And then the spices become more um, exotic, more sort of cinnamon, touch of ginger, those sorts of. Um, you know, quite quite heady spices, and they're really lifting the wine. There's some nice red fruit, and I, I'm talking about ginger, and it seems like but sort of mulberry and ginger notes uh, running through there. I suppose there are some slightly meaty aspects as well that um, could easily be the Morfedras, one of one of its influences. The alcohol is quite is quite warming. Um, and that's leaving the spices on the finish. It's not particularly showing delicate red fruit. The acidity is sufficient to keep the, the red fruit lively and juicy, but it's not particularly high. It's not um, sharp um, or tart. The, um, the wine finishes with a warmth and it's a, a sort of a warm, dark plum prune note. It's got a lovely intensity, but it's not quite to a sort of a, a, a tight intensity. It's quite open and juicy, and I guess that's some of the Grenache notes there coming through. Um, I mean, this has got a lovely structure, but the structure is not astringent or particularly drying, other than that sort of initial rush of um, pepper and exotic spices at, right at the beginning there. Um, I think this is a wine that you know, it probably has the ability to age for seven or eight years very happily, probably at least ten. Um, its alcohol will help it do that. I don't think it necessarily would, would age much longer than that, and I don't think you need it to either, because its tannins are already relatively rounded, um, and the, the amount of fruit there is making the wine accessible. But um, yes, so that was Chateau L'Hospitalette, their Grand Vin. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Do please follow us on YouTube and uh, I hope you'll like and share or comment on the videos. Um, any interaction would be great to see. Um, thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll join us again soon. Bye now.